hello hello and praise the lord i pray that you are doing wonderful this morning this evening whatever time you get to watch this i am doing an interview with my husband tony hinton and um we are going to dig right into it the name of this interview is men who wait okay so i know that this is an interview for men but i know some women will be listening in as well when it comes to waiting on God for a spouse is it as frustrating for you all as it is for us um yes of course you know um you know the wait I mean no one wants to wait you know you go to the grocery store what we do we run to the shortest line you know mm -hmm. we go to TGI Fridays or whatever the case may be you know they say 10 minute wait you ready to leave and go to the next restaurant <laughs> down the street so I think it's just in our nature not to really want to wait. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes God try to whip that in shape, mm -hmm. like, you know, get it together, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And sometimes, and a lot of times the wait is necessary. We have to wait because um, if we get the promise before time, it, it can damage us. Not only it can damage us, but it can damage the person if you're waiting on a spouse that you're getting with. So it's not good to um, obtain the blessing prematurely. You know, and sometimes we try to push God and try to cry out tears and try to kick and scream. And, you know, um, and, and he, he's not, you know, just like our own children, they, they'll they kick, scream, but we know what's best for them. Mm -hmm. So we don't move. You know, we just continue to let them get it all out. And when they finish getting it all out, you know, eat your food. That's what I just told you to do, <laughs> you know. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the weight is, is, is tough, you know, because especially uh, for individuals who are not saying that if you're a virgin that, the weight is not tough for you, you know, but I'm saying if you're used to a certain lifestyle when you mm -hmm. were out in the world and mm -hmm. you were used to sleeping with whomever, you know, whether if it was one person or 10 people, you know, you were used to fulfilling your flesh mm -hmm. whenever you desired to. So when you come become saved and you come into the body of Christ, you know, the Lord, he switches all that around. He's like, no, you know, <laughs> cut it off. You can't do it. You know, if you watch pornography, you can't do that no more. You know, if you masturbate, you can't do that no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and, and it becomes a battle. You know, now it becomes a battle because now it's a war between your spirit and your flesh. So, mm -hmm. um, the weight, you know, is tough. It's tough for men. And it's also, uh, it's, it's a little dangerous for men. You know, men, mm -hmm. we have to be careful because the Bible says, he who, he who finds of a wife finds of a good thing and obtain a favor from the sometimes world. we see the women they have to wait until they're found mm -hmm. they're not going around not supposed to mm -hmm. go around with a wedding ring talk about you know boo marry me please you down yeah. on your knee and your dress like are you serious no get up um <laughs> but you know it's our job to do that and that is our job to do that you just can't do that with anybody wow you know you just can't say oh he said i gotta go find a wife no he still have to order your steps to do that mm. he still have to tell you who it is you know what I'm saying? He still have to um, direct you through prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, and the only way you're going to find her is is through prayer. You know, wow. through prayer. Yes. So, um, and the reason I say that is because when you're waiting on God for for the promise, the person that you need to stay connected to is God. Mm -hmm. That's the one who you need to stay connected to. We try to connect to all these different people doing the wait. We try to connect to my wow. friend over here on the left, my friend over here on the right. You know, first lady at the church. I'm trying to go over her house and eat this day. I'm trying to do this. And that's nothing wrong with that. But you try to occupy your time so much so that you neglect God. Mm. And you don't want to do that. So the weight begins to get tough. Back years and years ago when I was uh, I was partying and, you know, God. Well, before I came to God, it was this young lady that was at this uh, college. And it was a college pretty much far a little far it was a nice little drive away from where we live and so i used to see her all the time she was on the cheerleading team and whatnot and you know i was like man you know she looked nice blah 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 mm -hmm. so weird thing is i get so I, I finally give my life to god you know because back then i was like man you know I, I think i asked my homeboy about it and whatnot but he was like you know she dating such and such so i was like all right left it alone so now i'm back home like three hours away and i'm driving at this point, it was like four years later. I'm driving, and guess what? He walking across the street near, wow. near where I live. What at. a coincidence! <laughs> you know, so um, we have to be careful because the enemy knows exactly how to set up, set us up. You mm -hmm. know, he knows how to set us up. We thinking it's a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a blessing from God. 
Uh-huh. You know, because I was like, yeah, God, you did this thing, you know. <laughs> um, and Lord, we'll show you real quick that it ain't him. It, wow. It's us that try to make somebody the one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We try to fit them. It's just like, um, I don't know, it's just like you having a triangle trying to put it through a circle. Wow. And you're like, you turn every which way trying to stuff it in the circle. Like, I know you're going to fit in it. You're going to get in here today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And God's sitting there like, I'm showing you everything you need to see that is not it. Wow. You know, and so when I finally got a chance to converse with the young lady uh, and we started talking, we got on the phone and um, so forth and so on. And um, she wasn't in church. She didn't, she didn't know God. She wasn't saved. She just like, you know, I want to. I want to do me. I want to, you know, do you <laughs> and, and, you know, and live happy ever after, you know, and God, and that, that was proof right there. You know, how can two walk together except they be agreed? So, Amen. um, anybody trying to sleep with you, you need to push that person back. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that, you know, um, well, shouldn't they want to want to sleep with you? Yes. But if they're trying to force themselves on you or if they're not understanding of the commitment that you have to God, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm and not that's saying... what you mean when you say if they if they want to if they want to sleep with you, of course they're going to be a, a, you know attracted right. sexually to you when you get married. You should want to have that desire with them, but and it's and it's right time. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. you you want that, you know, but a very clear line of boundaries. Yeah. Um, and I just kept trying to go and see how far it could go without. Well, you know, I can get a save. You know what I'm saying? She can come church with me. Um, so men do that because they always oh yeah. say oh yeah. women try to get the dude out the club, get him out and make them, you know, <laughs> uh, make them the perfect, you know, man that they desire. So, so men do this. Oh yeah. Too. Yeah. I wanted to keep her, <laughs> I wanted to keep her, you know, but you know, I'm glad I didn't know. I'm glad I didn't, <laughs> but that was my mindset then, you know, I was just like, you know, and by this time, I think I was already two years into um, living for God fully, you know. And long story short, man, I ended up falling with, with homegirl. Mm-hmm. And um, I was celibate for a minute wow. um, when I fell with her. And uh, I was really, really messed up. And I remember um, that wasn't enough. I, I ended up going back to her house after, like a couple days later. And matter of fact, it was a Saturday night. She asked me to stop over. And I was like... You know, like, here we go. <laughs> so, you know, I go in the house and she goes in the shower, come out, you know, nice, barely nothing on and wow. sprays herself down and <laughs> lays across me on the couch and seduce me, try to seduce me. Now, I had wow. to sing on the choir the next morning. Wow. I should have never been there in the first place. Mm-hmm. I should have never been there in the first place. You know, sometimes we're like, God, how can you let this happen? No, we like, Tony, how you could... How could you let this happen? Wow. You know, and um, and when I tell you I literally got out that chair and ran out her house, I mm. literally ran out this girl's house because I knew if I didn't leave, I was going to fall wow. again, you know, and, and, and my, my love for God at that point was stronger than a booty call, you mm. know what I'm saying? My love for God at that point was stronger than, oh, I just want a wife, so let me just try to wife her, you know, so mm. I can sleep with her. You know, um, and that's that's the that's the other thing. I'm like, you know, people are tricking themselves. They they're just going around marrying people just so you can have sex. It, there's more to marriage than just to have sex. You know what I'm saying? Trust and believe. Sex is you're not sexing every day, every minute. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a a good portion. You know, God blessed us with that as a pleasure, but it's not something. <laughs> you we're not lab rats. We not just <laughs> we have jobs. We have kids. We, have jobs. we got families, you know. We got stuff to do. So, you know, you're not <laughs> you know, some people make it seem like that. Some people make it seem like, you know, that's that's all you're doing. You know what I'm saying? That's not all we do. That's all when you get married, that's not all you do for real. Don't put folk I'm not saying that married people don't have sex. What I'm saying is don't get married just to have sex. Right. Something is wrong with that picture. Yeah. If that's all you can base your relationship off of, something is wrong with that. Something have to when you turn 90, you both 90, you know, somebody probably like, I got, I, I'll take care of it when I'm 92. <laughs> Come on. Like Abraham did, right? You know, but, um, you know, but, um, but we have to know when not to put ourselves in certain predicaments. And yes. that night I put myself in a hole. And needless to say, when I got to church the next morning, oh my God, you know, I don't think they could hold me down in that service because I was like, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> right, Father, Father, Father. I praise God. Like it was 
let me tell you, until I passed out almost. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, so it's definitely tough for the men. And like I said, it's a little bit more tricky for us because mm-hmm. what we'll start doing, we'll start doing God's job. We'll start mm-hmm. searching and we'll start, because people are like, well, you said, you know, the Bible says to seek, you know, if seek and, and look for a wife. You're going around looking and you're looking. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that means a literal look. Mm-hmm. You know, it when means to fine. live your life. Wow. Live your life for God. And as you go and through your life, you're, he's going to lead you to her. It's a certain point in time. So it's just like this. It's like, um, before, the foundation of, before the foundation of the world, God know who you were. God know who, who you were going to be. He already knows who your spouse is and who your spouse is going to be. So this was before you was even born. Boom, he created this all before you was born. So before I was born, he knew Nicole was going to be my wife. In the future, 2008, Nicole, you're going to meet Tony. I just, when I was born, I just lived my life. Mm. I wasn't looking for Nicole when I was born. Mm. I wasn't looking for Nicole when I was um, 20. I wasn't looking for Nicole when I was 22. You know Mm. what I'm saying? I wasn't even looking for Nicole when I found her. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just in position <laughs> in he God. He finds anyway. You know, yes. he who finds a wife. You know My what I'm saying? Lord. I was in position. I was working in the kingdom, and I came across her. See, people want people want a rewards without work. Mm. You know, people want rewards without work. You want a spouse, but you don't do nothing in your church. Mm-hmm. You know, you want a spouse, but you don't give no time to God. All this stuff goes hand in hand. We got all different types of of, of theology and and different. I'm telling you what works for me. Oh, wow. And my house was about to go into foreclosure. Approved me for a modification. You had to make three payments for this modification. You could not miss a payment. Mm-hmm. So I was taking my money from my tithes from every time I got paid to pay these payments. And I had one more payment left. And I was like, I got. I had like five hundred dollars left or something like that. But I was still short. I couldn't even make the mortgage, mortgage payment. I said, God, I took all my back tithes and offer. I prayed over it and I gave it. And I gave it. I said, God, this is your money. When I tell you, God came through for me. That last payment, I wasn't supposed to miss it. I missed that last payment because I gave my money to the church. I missed my last payment. When I tell you, they approved my modification. Mm. I did not have to pay no fees. Mm. I didn't have to pay no application money. I didn't have to pay anything. Mm -hmm. Because they originally told me I was going to have to pay $3,000 to get this modification done. And when I tell you, I had to pay nothing. I tell you, God will come through for you. He will come through for you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, People can deny the Bible. People can say, oh, you know, I'm going to go through the whole you know, oh, that's Old Testament, that's New Testament. You can deny the Bible. You can't deny my testimony. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm a living witness that it works. It's a difficult thing for men and women. It's a difficult thing for the for both for both of us. You know, but um, women just be the diamond and and be be sought out. You know, mm-hmm. and wait, um, fellas, we have to rely on God to pick the right one because you do not want to pick a Proverbs. You know. Not thirty-one woman, <laughs> right? There's one in Proverbs that say her lips drip honey, and, and she leads you to the way of Sheol. Yeah, so you don't, <laughs> you don't want to go, you don't want to go down that block, you know. So it's definitely tough. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely tough, and it's thing where it's no antidote. You know, a lot of people try to figure out, you know, like four plus two, you know, husband or three minus four, <laughs> wife, it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? God has a set time for everything. And then there are some things that he's trying to get out of you that, you know, he, he okay, wants. so he wants as men of God, when things take place in different relationships, there are men who um, experience hurt, betrayal, um, setups, all of that other stuff. Um, as a man of God, um, waiting on God or just, just as a man of God, period, how do you deal with being healed from things that may have been done to you so that you're in the right mindset for when God brings your spouse? You're in the right mindset so you can, you know, hear from God and be obedient to God. Like Paul said, you know, you got to die daily, Mm -hmm. you know. I know this flesh attached to these bones right here. Mm-hmm. This is there's nothing good in this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was to say, well, you know, I've thought about you know killing somebody, or I thought about robbing, or I thought about have thoughts came across my mind. Yes, you know, and I'm not saying it in a braggadocious way. I'm just saying it because of this flesh mm-hmm. that I reside in. 
So the thing is, you know, as men of God, when you are not saved, you're used to handling things a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you yourself wasn't going to handle it, you could have called Pookie or you could have called, <laughs> you know, JJ or, or you know, <laughs> Danksy, you know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. That's my uncle. <laughs> you know, call you know, call you call the, the one in the family that just didn't care, you uh -huh. know. Um but you know, when you become saved, says, vengeance is mine, say of the Lord, you know, and sometimes we sit there with our watch, like, I'm waiting for you to get them back. Mm -hmm. Father, where are you at? You know, they embarrassed me, they they made me look stupid, they they did X, Y, and Z. But let me share some light on you to you real quick. Um God's vengeance is far worse than ours. Even mm -hmm. if you never see what happened to the person, mm -hmm. let me tell you, they are going to pay for what they have done. You know, um, and then there are certain situations and circumstances, but God will allow you to see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can't get so caught up in 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 having this uh, vendetta against someone because of what they did to us. You know, what are we supposed to do? Turn the other cheek? Some people are like, no, you turn the other cheek. <laughs> but as we strive to do better in God, that's a part of the process of, you know, putting our flesh under subjection. That's a part of that discipline. You know what I'm saying? Because when you out there in the street and you witnessing to somebody, you know, and or, or, or they curse you, you can't go off punching people out in the street, you know, because they, <laughs> they didn't want to come to God. What encouragement could you give to a man of God that's, that's newly converted or, or just have been struggling with submitting to the will of God, period, you know, with his anger or, you know, just doing things uh, a different way? Maybe it's like you said before, you know, he was used to, you know, just, just having sex with whoever you know, he desired to, even if he didn't like just go around and sleep with random girls, you know, if he was in a relationship, you know, he loved her, he had sex, you know, what would you say to that man of God now finding himself in a situation where he wants to please God and he's finding it um, difficult with just being obedient and just walking this walk? First thing is, you know, we have to uh, put our flesh under subjection. That's one. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Um, if we don't resist him, he's not going anywhere, you know. So what that means is if I had a girlfriend and I know I was used to sleeping with her, you know, um, I just can't openly invite that into my space, you mm -hmm. know, and wait into your space, you know. So um, it's just certain things you got to do. If you were used to watching pornography, you got to take the first step. The roll of pornography tapes away or CDs or whatever, DVDs, whatever it is, throw them away. Um you know, if you were used to one strip clubs, you know, you got to stop. So we have to be practical about things. You know, we have to be practical. And then somebody may be saying, well, suppose it's a struggle. You know, I really love God, but, you know, I don't intend on, you know, doing it. It just happens. You know, I, I mean, if it happens, then that's a struggle. But if you plan it, if you live it, if you um, at work talking about, I'm going to do this as soon as I get off, that's not a struggle. And that's what people don't realize. That's you living in sin. So we have to, you know, um, be very careful. We have to be strategic. I remember when I was single, you know, I had to keep busy. You know, um, I had to keep busy because being alone, they say what, being alone was a devil's workshop. Uh, yeah. I don't mind is a devil's I workshop. Don't mind. Being alone for me was a devil's <laughs> workshop. Um, I had some time Thoughts to think about some stuff. And... Yeah. So, you know, um, we have to be very strategic in, in how we approach things, you know. Um, and, and you have to know, know yourself. That's the key. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't trick yourself. To thine own self be true. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, to thine own self be true. Be true to yourself. You know, we can trick other people. We mm -hmm. can we can tell people, oh, I, I feel this way when you're really not. Or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing this and I'm really not. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell yourself that. You know, because even when you even when you try to tell yourself and lie to yourself, yourself is like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't true. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we have to be true to ourselves. If you know... If you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have a, a strong sex drive, don't put yourself in a predicament to fall. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then on the flip side of that, don't put yourself in any predicament to even be set up to or for somebody else to think that you're doing something that you have no business. Because in that situation, you know, don't allow your good to be evil spoken of. You know, people will say, oh, you know, um, you know, uh, People be trying to say I'm a freak just because I be around men and stuff like that. Don't let your good be you spoken of. You know, you have to be careful. You know, or 
or you know people think I'm mean because you know I, I I'm not really mean. If they talk to me, they know what I'm like. You know, what I'm saying don't let your good be evil spoken of. You know, so it's just certain things we have to be practical about. You know, um, if you're not the church gigolo, don't be around jumping around, hopping around from church. You know, with different women in the church. You know, what I'm saying so. That's my little soapbox. I'm gonna get off that real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so anyway, so as men of God, you know, we have to really sustain. One of the things we have to do is really pray. We have to pray and ask God to help us because I know for me as a child, you know, I had anger in me that was pretty strong. Like I would be shaking because I was so mad, you know. So it's those traits, you know, of anger that tried to hinder me from uh, moving forward in God, you know. Mm -hmm. And and there, it was those little traits that I suppressed behind the scenes, you know. Most people didn't know. I had it, but in my mind, I'm like cursing people out, <laughs> mm. you know, I'm, I'm just enraged and, and going off, you know, and going back to when somebody, you know, do something against you, you want to revert back, you know, you want to revert back to, you know, picking up the brick and just, you know, botting somebody in the head or, Bye. you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know, you know, throwing that, 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 that double dutch and, um, you know, well, for me, I took off running, you know, you want to hit me back. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, you rock were a real runner. Bam. Mm -hmm. It depends. Yeah, if the person was bigger than me, I'd hit him and run. You know, but um, <laughs> that's something stupid. You were a little stated. boy. <laughs> <laughs> you was a little boy, right? Though you're not yeah, talking yeah. about. You was know, like last year. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. nah. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, like elementary school, you know. But you know those things though. We we don't realize that some of those childhood traits follow us through adulthood. You know what I'm saying? And we now you become, you know, you get the clergy collar and mm. you're looking all nice on the outside, but mm. on the inside, it's still that little boy who used to have that rage and that, you know, fits. And it only can take God to deliver and to suppress those feelings. You know, so the question was, how do men of God suppress the feelings when we feel like somebody has done us wrong? It's that relationship with God. God is the only one that can comfort us, you know, and we already have a strike against us. For one, we got an ego. You know, mm. <laughs> we don't want nobody to know when we're struggling or having an issue or when we're offended. You know, mm. we don't want nobody to know when we're emotional. Um, uh, one one trait of depression uh, for mm. a woman is sadness and a trait of depression for a man is anger. You wow. know, so men, you know, we, we tend to get angry. Don't ask me about nothing. You know, don't talk to me about nothing. You know, that's why people are like, well, why do men shut down so much? We shut down for one I'm not going to sit here and explain to you what I'm feeling in my head all over again. Or be the subject of um, having to hear a whole dissertation of what you think I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So as a man, you know what I'm saying, we hide all this stuff and we bottle it all up, you know, until, you know, it explodes. You know, when somebody leave a noodle on the floor <laughs> or, you know, somebody forgot to double your bag at the market. Now you take a bottle. You know what I'm saying? So, but it takes that relationship with God to really help us to uh, really stand in Jesus. You know, Jesus, he, he said, be angry. He said, you can be angry. He said, but sin not, you know, so don't be punching people in the face. Don't be cursing people out. Don't be, you know, doing things that's outside the will of God, you know, and, just be strong, you know, be strong and wait on God. A situation happened to me, I'm trying to be wise how I say this, but a situation happened to me where I was out of a, a significant amount of money. Um, and when I tell you the anger, you know, if, if I could have been like, Holy Spirit, come out for a second and put you on the shelf. <laughs> you know, um, Jesus turning around for a second. You know, because I'm about to do something <laughs> to somebody. You know what I'm saying? And when you get to those points, you just got to remember, vengeance is mine, say of the Lord. You know, uh, when you start having those mind attacks about attacking people. I used to have, remember one year, um, a murder demon was trying, was really trying to get my mind, you know, and, and you know, was really trying to get me to kill somebody that did me wrong. You know what I'm saying? A, a female. Mm -hmm. And I, I plotted that thing. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I got this. You know what I'm saying? And, and I mean... Those spirits are so strong, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But you got to say, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You got to resist the enemy. You got to say, devil, you are a liar. You will not come in my head. You will not speak these things to me. You will get out of my ear gates. You will get out of my house. You will... And you got to rebuke the enemy, you know, because if you don't, he's going to he's gonna run rampant because he's going to think that you're going to accept what he's speaking to you. You know, a lot of people that's in mental hospitals, they are demons speaking to these individuals. 
You know what I'm saying? And you have to speak against that. You have to use the word of God against that. You know, you got to say, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, you have to, you know, rebuke the enemy. Plead the blood of Jesus against them. Remember my cousin years ago, he uh, was, he had just got out of prison and he had came to our church and visited our church with us. I mean, he was doing good, had his hand raised and everything in church. And something happened like two weeks after he came back out from prison and he snapped and he ended up hurting somebody. You know, and he ended up getting sent back. And um and and, and and it is no situations like that, you know, that's warfare. The enemy mm -hmm. didn't want him to keep coming to church with us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The enemy didn't want him to get closer to God. You know what I'm saying? And so we got to read. That's why that scripture is so important. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So that means resist that person that's trying to cause you to have an argument. Mm -hmm. Resist that boss who wants Sweet to make boy. you slap them. Resist the person who keeps lying on you. You Because, you know, we'll get to the point where we're like, Lord, I can't keep taking this. I can't take no more. I can't take no more. And then God will let you stay in the fire a little longer so you he can see show you how much greater is he that is in you than he is that, in, that is in the world. He wants you to know that there is more power in you. Then with that person and with that spirit, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he's trying to show you that he that that spirit is trying to get you unraveled. That spirit is trying to get you uh to backslide. That spirit mm -hmm. is trying to get you to slap that person. You know what I'm saying? So or we'll sleep with that girl. Or we'll sleep with that girl <laughs> or that guy or you know or, or your teacher or whatever the case may be. Who knows? You know. But that <laughs> spirit. These are spirits that we're dealing with. You know. So men of God. You know. Just continue to be strong. Be continue to be strong in God. Continue to. To just worship him. You got to set your face like a flint. You, and you got to have thick skin on this side. Because a lot of people say, oh, Christianity is a crutch. You got to be strong to be a Christian nowadays. Mm -hmm. You got to be strong to get cussed out and don't say nothing back. You got to be strong to be hurt and you can't fight the person. You got to be strong to lend somebody money and they don't even bring your money back to you. And now your bills are late. You got to be a strong person to deal with stuff like that. So don't. Don't let people say, oh, Christianity is a crutch, this, that, and the other. No, it really takes, church yeah, God no, it takes, it really takes something to do this thing. This is where the real men and women, if you can stand, this is the side you need to stand on. You know, don't tell me, oh, I graduated from this, I graduated from Harvard. No, let me see you stand in, in, in Christendom. <laughs> let me see you stand in Christendom and not. Uh, lash back out on people. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I'm not saying so because some people will say, well, are you saying that no Christians will lash out, no Christians curse people out? And no. that regular people don't either. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so I mean the thing is, it doesn't matter what everybody else does. Right. God set the standard. Jesus set the standard for us. That's what we're supposed to be abiding by. That's why the world don't want them to do with the church. Because they don't see the power. They don't see Jesus in the church. You know, they don't see Jesus in the church. Why? Because we out there, we out there uh, uh, cursing. You know, we out there doing X, Y, and Z and, and doing stuff in front of them. They're like, oh, they just like us. Oh, cool. Y'all want to go to church Sunday? All right, cool. They riding in your car with the demons in them. <laughs> Damn, them demons not supposed to be comfortable riding in your car. What type of standards, you know, do you recognize? Because there are some men of God that's fallen in my spirit that may be young men of God, middle aged or older. But they have not seen a man of God set a certain standard or set a certain tone. Maybe they did not grow up in a home um, with a, a godly man, a godly example. Maybe they grew up in a home with drunks. Maybe they had an absentee father. Maybe it was a situation where the mother and the father wasn't together, right? Their, their father was a man of God. They just did not, you know get to see a, a man of God set the correct type of, of standard, what would you say to them? How would you encourage them? Whatever you do, do it in excellence. Whenever you leave out the house, leave out your house in excellence. Don't, you know, leave out looking crazy. Don't, you know, um, you know, if you, if you work somewhere, don't show up to work late. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it. Start setting the standards of your reputation by showing people that you are a man of your word. Wow. That you're a man of your word. That's the first step. Once you show people that you're the man of your word, then they like, okay, he got integrity. I can trust what he say. God changed people's names when their reputation changed. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, Saul was turned into Paul after his experience on the road to Damascus. So, you know, when your name is changed, you know what I'm saying, your reputation is different. When you're saved, you're now saved. You're, you're not the old you. You know what I'm saying? Good. So, 
you have to continue to press. Uh, if you're a single dad, you know, God sees your struggle. God sees, you know, the hurt that you feel. You know, a lot of times we don't show emotions. We don't cry. You know, we don't cry. We, we typically don't share too much with people, you know, but God is like, lay in my arms. Let me know how you feel. You know, tell me everything. You don't have to, you can bring down those walls with me. I'm your father. I know who you are. I know who you were before your mother met your father. I know who you were before the beginning of time. So we can be vulnerable in the arms of God. You go in your prayer closet and you get down on your face and you cry if you have to cry. You know, you let him, daddy, I, I can't do this no more. I can't struggle like this no more. I have kids to feed. I have a wife to feed. You know, I'm, 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 I'm single, but you know, I feel like my childhood trauma is really getting to my mind. So I'm praying that somebody will be touched, that you will really see and understand that God is like, come to me and, and lay in my arms. You don't have to worry about what people going to think, you know, in church, you know, we, you know, we be in church, we all puffed up, you know, and, and, you know, the praise break out, we puffed up, like rocking back and forth, trying not to, you know, and then we be the ones acting the most crazy when they hit us, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, but no, but he's like, you know, come to me, you know, talk to me. And we just go to you, when you pray, you just just go to God and you say, Lord, for real, like this, this day right here, you know, we could have, we could have kept that for another day. You know what I'm saying? You know, you build that relationship with God. That's what your relationship with God is built on. I'm not talking about, oh, heavenly father. I'm not talking about that. Jesus knows you, you know, so you, we can, we can make God laugh. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, we got a sense of humor because he made sense of humor. <laughs> he made it, you know, he, he, we got laughter because he made it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, be, learn how to laugh with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because some some things he'll, you know, he'll allow run across your head, like, and you'll be, like, sitting there like, man, Lord, you you know, you're real funny for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we just, that has to be your comfort place. You know, that has to be your comfort zone. You know, as men, like I said, you, although you may have homeboys, you know, and wow. um, family and friends and so forth, you may, there is no comfort zone. There is no safe haven. You know what I'm saying? Because you're like, if I do show them, that does that make me weak? You know what I'm saying? If I do cry, does that make me, you know, look like a punk? You know what I'm saying? But you can go to God. You can let the Lord know, Lord, I'm hurting. You know what I'm saying? I'm hurting. I've been in foster care since I was a child. Mm, this thing is messing, Lord. this thing is messing with me, you know? And I'm, I'm, this is 30 years later and I'm still bothered by this. Ask them to help you. That's the one that we have to confess those things to. That's the one we have to confess those things to. I remember some years ago, I had a struggle so bad, I didn't even want to even pray about it. You know, but I'm like, the Lord already, he already knows how you feel. Just open your mouth and verbalize it to him. Let him know. That's the first step. You know, let him know. Be strong. Be be encouraged. You know, um, the struggle is tough. You know, so I just admonish all the men you know, we stand together, you know, we stand together, especially if we, if you're the head of your own household, you know what I'm saying? It, it can be tough. You know, the weight can be tough, you know, trying to balance, you know, keeping your wife happy and trying to balance, keeping the children happy and keeping the boss happy so you can keep bringing the money in, you know, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, work in, you know, if you're working in a position at the church and, you know, trying to keep things, you know, tight with you and trying to get your own personal time and, you know, that can be a tough thing. You know, and I had to learn how to let things go because I will hold on to stuff for a long time. What I mean by that is, you know, whether it was different clubs, different organizations I was a part of. See, it was a lot of stuff I was part of when I was single that it don't work now. So I'm married. You know, I don't have the time to do it. You know, and you got to learn how to let things go. You know, get a, at least one good prayer partner. You know, good. And if you can't find a prayer partner, you do, you are your best prayer partner. If you are married, your wife is your best prayer partner. If you're single, you just, you and the Holy Ghost just go in mm -hmm. and pray, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Something just fell in my spirit. Uh -huh. As a man of God that is watching this, having a tough time um, financially and is trying to look for a job and he's married, what encouragement would you give can you encourage men of God who, like you said, are, you know, have children and he's he's frustrated and he seems a little withdrawn from the family? Uh, what what encouragement could you give him during that wait until God opens up a door for provision, giving him a different perspective on what God could be doing through this time that he's allowing some things to to, to seem to be held back. You have to really really uh keep your mind covered 
and even with your mind covered, it's a struggle. Um, I got a personal testimony of the same thing, and one of the things that I would I would tell um, wives is to be very um, supportive during that time, you know, uh, because men we we won't tell you that we we on the inside we're not gonna tell you we falling apart <laughs> you know we're not gonna tell you you know i'm about to flip out um you know i thought about writing a dear john letter and just dipping out because i'm just not a, the provider that i thought i was you know we're not going to tell you that um so the only thing that i would tell your wives is to really be supportive and and to pray you through but for you you know you just gotta stand you know, continue to do your part. When I lost my job some years ago, you know, I lost my job to, <laughs> I'll say a technicality. Um, and I was lied on by my supervisor. And um, I, 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 was out of, I was out of work for two years, two and a half years almost. And I was just bouncing. I was getting little, I mean, I was getting little, you know, gigs here and there, you know, that kept us going. But um, as far as a career, career, it took me like three years to get back on our feet, you know, and only thing I can tell you is Jesus was the only thing that got me through. You know, I mean, I stayed in that prayer closet because it was just that hard. It, mentally, it was just that hard. Um, you know, when you have small children, it was so crazy because I remember one day I was kneeling to bed praying and my wife and I was just talking about this yesterday and her and my two older kids bust in the room and I was just on the knee, on, my, on the floor praying like, Lord, we struggling, Lord, we need help. And she busted in the room and was like, show me a positive pregnancy test. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, when, um, when they left back out the room, I'm like, just get the memo I just sent up there? <laughs> <laughs> we struggling you gonna send another one no but, you know but you know just can you know continue to pray you know that's the time when you just bask in your prayer closet you know um and, and sometimes you know because sometimes during that period it was like I, almost impossible to pray you know only thing i could say was jesus just help me you know um going through each day it was just like help me i mean it it it, it gets it gets rough it gets rough so i just encourage you to stay connected to the vine, stay connected to the vine, stay connected to God. That is your source. Even when you feel like you're going to die, that's your source. You know what I'm saying? He will not let you fail. He will not let you fail. Your mother, even when your mother and father will forsake you, he will never forsake you. The Lord will take you up. You know, so this is just a testimony of what's to come. This is just a, you, what, you, what, what people see now. And I remember we preached, I preached a message years ago. Um, I can't even remember, but it was it was in reference to uh, I want to say it was Lazarus, if I'm why not mistaken. Why didn't you come sooner? Why didn't you come sooner? Jesus, you know? why didn't you come sooner? Um, and in that message, it was, you know, you had you had Mary and you had you had uh, Lazarus' sister. Um, and they were, you know, crying, you know, and, and they pretty much had the attitude, like, had you gotten here, you know what I'm saying, sooner, I wouldn't have, you know, lost my brother, you know. And, and, and that's what some, some of the things we say today Lord, had you had you stepped in a year ago, I wouldn't have lost my house. Had you stepped mm -hmm. in two years ago, I wouldn't have lost my wife. My wife mm -hmm. wouldn't have walked out on me because mm -hmm. I, you know, if you had stepped in and sent me this job, you know, um, X, Y, and Z time ago, you know, I wouldn't be in this predicament. I wouldn't be in this situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it's 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 those times where it don't seem right on our end. Mm -hmm. But we're we're a finite being. He is infinite. You know, he knows everything. He knows everything. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So he knows your future in today's present. We only mm. know today's present and the past. Mm. But the Lord knows the future, the past, and the present all at the same time. Yes. So we can't tell God how to run our life. We can't tell him. In in, in our little our little peanut brain, we can we think <laughs> we know. We think we know the best outcome. Lord, this is what I really want. This is what I really want. You, we don't know that. We don't really know because our flesh is deceitful, mm. you know. So don't follow your heart. Don't follow your flesh. You know, your flesh will tell you, oh, that girl, man, right there. I want her to be my wife. The Lord know four or five years down the road, sis going to leave you for a homeboy across the street. Mm. After you done gave your heart and, you, and all everything to her. And, and then, you know, you might snap and try to go kill a girl. Because you don't empty yourself out to this woman. It may sound far fetched, but it's the truth. Look at Lifetime. There's a lot of movies that come on there. <laughs> Based on a true story. <laughs> Based on them true stories. And it'd be stuff <laughs> just like that. Men married 
had a, a affair on the side, killed your wife who was nine months pregnant, mm. like he wasn't going to get caught. You know what I'm saying? But God tried to protect us from all these things. Mm. You know, so we just got to stay connected, trust stay in the God. word, trust mm-hmm. in God. Know that the season you're in is not going to last always. Mm-hmm. The season you're in is going to change. When Joseph, when he was in the pit, his season was going to change. He, did, he didn't even know at that time while he was in the pit that God was building a place for him in the pinnacle. That God was building a place for him mm-hmm. uh, and to be second in control over Egypt. He mm-hmm. didn't know. You don't know right now in your struggle yes, that Lord. God has a place for you that you would have never imagined in your life where you would be. You never thought thought you would go back to school. You never thought you would have a, a degree. You never even thought you would go back to, uh, to to have a master's degree. You never thought you would get promoted on your job. You may not even have a degree, but watch God promote you anyway. Mm-hmm. You have to stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to him. Don't dip back to the club. Don't go back getting no uh, uh, alcohol. Alcohol is not going to fix anything. That The only thing alcohol does is, is make you feel good for a night, and then you're going to wake up with a headache, and the same problem is going to be there, and you're going to be like, Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> no, you just go and you drop to your back out there. Yes. Lord, don't let me go back to the club. Lord, don't let them old friends call me. I'm too weak right now. Don't let none of them booty calls call me. I'm see, I'm talking about people who got real relationship with God. You gotta be true to God. You gotta talk to him and let him know, God, this girl, I got a weakness for her. Don't let her come over here. Or mm-hmm. we're gonna have Jesus. sex. You know, so you have to make sure that you are in line with the Holy Spirit. You have to make sure that God is is in your forefront. Because if he's not in your forefront, that means there's an enemy somewhere close. Hmm. Mm. If God is not the only thing in front of you, that means something else is occupying your mind, Jesus. occupying your time, occupying your space. And we don't have time to have nobody taking no space from God. We got to allow him to occupy our full space. You know? So just be encouraged. I pray that this video has blessed you all. I pray, you know, I want to pray real quick for the brothers, you know, brothers, brothers. Be encouraged, be strong. You may say, well, I've been living for the Lord for X, Y, and Z years. I haven't seen no promises coming yet, and mm-hmm. I'm about to go to a different religion. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on My us. Lord. He won't give up on us. Speak you Lord. know, somebody may say, well, you know what? I already gave up on this religion. I went to another religion. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over here doing my thing over here. Ask God to open your eyes. Ask Jesus. him. Pull the scales from your eyes. Uh, ask, ask him. He will do it. He will do it. The enemy don't want us to be connected to God. And then what the enemy try to do now, he try to make it seem like there's no real brothers in the church. You know, I mean, it is, it is real brothers in the church. You know, we stand strong, we hold it down. You know what I'm saying? We hold it down, but be encouraged. You know, we all in this thing together, you know, pray for one another. So I'm just praying for everybody. You know, I pray that you will find this in a good place you know, this message, and uh, I've been in in, in some hard places, God knows, you know, if I could, if I had the time to tell you, you know what I'm saying, from physical, uh, just materialistic things, to mental, to, you know, uh, body ailments, sicknesses, and um, disabilities, a whole bunch of stuff, you know what I'm saying, but God is able, Hmm. He is able. You know, he is able. I'm pray for each and every last one of you that is watching this. And we just, God is going to do so something. So I want to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. God, I praise you. I give you honor and glory for each and every last person watching this. Oh, God, I pray for your sons, Lord God, my brothers. I pray that you will touch them even as they watch this video. I pray, God, that you will touch them while they're in the wait. Lord God, while they're waiting, oh God, on you, Father, I pray, Lord God, as you have sent them, Lord God, on this earth for a purpose, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that that purpose, Lord God, be fulfilled, Lord God, let them die. Continue to protect, shield, and cover them under your blood. I pray that you will bless them in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, cover them under your blood, their homes, their families, their children, oh God, even if they're single, God, I pray you will, Lord God, touch them even in the wait, Father, that you will, Lord God, give them strength, Lord God, to keep their flesh under subjection, that you will give them strength, Lord God, to just be the men of valor you have called them to be, Father. I pray against the spirit of depression. I pray against the spirit of depression, oh God. I pray against the spirit of oppression, oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray that you will help us, Father, to as men to continue, to continually stay in your presence and to continually keep you first, Father, that we know that you are our source. 
You are our deliverer. You are everything that we need, God. And I thank you for the day, oh God. I pray that you will touch though God, everyone watching this video, that it will be a blessing to them, Father. So I thank you, I praise you, and I give you glory, God, for everything that you're doing in their lives. For I know it's going to be a testimony unto your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.